Hey guys, Nathan from Arms and Armor here. We've done a bunch of cutting demonstration videos over the past year and a half, and you know, different ways of doing cutting demonstrations have different value, right? So if you're cutting tatami, really that's a good way to teach yourself how to cut. Pretty much anything that's sharp should cut tatami in the hands of a skilled cutter. Some other stuff we've done, like in our video of our uh, English bill a couple weeks ago, now uh, we chopped a piece of wood and we, you know, penetrated a piece of uh, mild steel. Now, those are mostly a spectacle, right? That's what all this, like, all these TV shows where they destroy swords and stuff, it's a spectacle. They're not really testing very much. And then we can have some more scientific tests about how high quality medieval weapons interacted with actual armor, right? Like our video uh, where I used a, a dagger and a rapier uh, to stab through some cloth armor that our friend Charles Lynn had made. So for today, we're gonna do some tests on some much better simulations of medieval armor, right? So one of the things we're gonna challenge is a piece of 14 gauge mild steel that I've hot dished and uh, uh, planished out. It is a pretty good representation of a bunch of kinds of medieval armor. And we've got this mounted here on a stand that's kind of like a shoulder. I'm going to put a padded blanket underneath it to act kind of like a gambeson. The other thing we've got, which is what a few people in comments had asked for, is a super high quality pauldron from our friend Josh Davis at Davis Reproductions. So this is a hardened steel gothic pauldron. It is super nice. We're talking about, you know, four figures of highest quality armor here. And I'm gonna hit them with an English bill, which is an infantry weapon. And I'm gonna hit them with a horseman's ax, which was specifically designed to kill people in armor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit this piece of dished mild 14 gauge steel with this English bill, right? So this was an infantry weapon, not a knightly weapon, but people who were fighting with these would encounter people who had armor, right? So this was for fighting people in armor and out of armor. It's hardened steel blade and points on an ash pole. It's got a cutting edge here and this forged beak up here. So I'm going to see what happens when I attack this. Safety third. Interesting. So we oh. broke our two by fours and we put a dent in this. I'll get us a close up shot. This did not penetrate this mild steel armor, right? The bill's fine. What it did do is smashed the heck out of the stand and ripped it out, right? Did this armor protect the guy from being skewered, right? That's a pretty hard hit. And I could have hit it harder uh, than I did if I was in the heat of battle or something. I would not want to be wearing this if you get hit by that weapon. Okay. So next, I'm gonna try using this horseman's axe. This is a weapon that was designed for armored combat. Right? It was made to defeat armor. So it's got uh, this big long spike and this kind of half moon axe head. The whole thing's made of steel. Uh, we'll see what it does to this piece of dished mild steel. So the spike on this axe definitely penetrated. Uh, it went through this piece of 14 gauge dished uh, steel. You can see where it went through there. Uh, and it hit it really pretty hard. Uh, again, you wouldn't want to be in here, but that spike, it's not burying in 
you know, to the to the hilt or anything. Armor's doing its job, but the axe is also challenging the armor, and you would definitely be injured if this if you were hit by this while wearing that armor. All right, so now I'm gonna try these two weapons on Josh Davis's uh, hardened steel pauldrons, right? So this stuff was state of the art. It was designed to really protect elite wearers. And this is a lower class weapon. Right? We're gonna see what happens. Now it should be noted that this weapon was not just for stabbing through armor. Instead of the hook, it's really good for pulling guys off the horse, and we have a picture attached to this blog of a bunch of guys beating out the knight, uh, which is probably what this was more for, but let's give it a shot. See the sparks come off of that? That was awesome. So this is where the point of impact was. It scraped a little bit, hit against this articulated uh, piece of the armor. The armor is you know, uh, slightly marred, but essentially undamaged. Although I hit it pretty hard, right? So that did not go through this armor. There was a spark that came off of it when I hit it, which was super cool. So one of the interesting things about this weapon is of course it has more than one uh, striking surface. And so I'm gonna try hitting it with this back spike and see if we get any different result. And we did. Yeah. Right, this shows us that the different parts of this weapon have really different capabilities. This is elite armor for the day. Time for the horseman's axe on the hardened armor. So this created a dent it actually blunted the point of this hammer. It hit hard, but it didn't actually go through. And uh, that armor still functions, still articulated, uh, pretty safe. So what does this actually teach us? Right? Well, number one, it shows that both mild armor and hardened armor are pretty effective. If you got hit not wearing armor by either of these weapons, it'd be totally devastating. So the video where I cut to Tommy with that English bill, not only did it cut through the tatami, but it broke the hardwood peg that was holding it together, right? So that would have chopped through someone's arm super easily, straight through. Wearing mild armor, you're pretty safe uh, from those attacks in that it's not gonna cut your arm off, right? But you're getting hit really hard, really hard <laughs> with a big weapon and you're not gonna be okay, probably. Now, even with this hardened armor, right, it can be penetrated with that relatively low class infantry weapon that was super popular at the time, right? So knights in great armor were not invulnerable to attack from a bunch of infantrymen. We're gonna do some more tests uh, with these armors and with some more weapons and see what we can learn over the next couple of months, so stay tuned.